Hey, everybody. Hey, Lisa. Hey, everybody. Hey, Tammy. What's happening? All kinds of gardening stuff. All yeah. kinds of gardening stuff over here. How about you? Oh, I don't know. I'm like all sorts of indoor gardening stuff, but. Oh, that's awesome. I want to get to that point too. Waiting. Uh, this is the hard part because now it's like we're running out of room. We want it to go outside, mm -hmm. but it can't. Mm -hmm. I planted yeah. my onions last year on the 25th of April. I'm trying to mm -hmm. figure out, should I plant them in the container and try to cover them or mm -hmm. should I just wait another week? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Isn't that like a guessing game this time of year? I'm doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. I let my tomatoes play outside yesterday. <laughs> I so wish I could leave them out there. I've got different herbs that I'm growing that I'm honestly thinking about putting outside because I think that they can handle it. You know, a lot of herbs are just like fancy weeds, right? Like they're just weeds. I mean, that's what a lot of people, a lot of things I want to grow are things people are trying to get out of their yard. That's <laughs> one thing I've noticed. So real quick. Let's say hi to some folks. Yes. Creative Redundancy. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi, Gwen. Broke Cowgirl Homestead. Hey, Gwen. Devin, our new land. Good to see you. And hey, our suburban hillbilly. Thank you all for coming in. Hey, Rebecca. So I've got stuff that I want to put. And I, I, you know, when we were, when I was getting the thumbnail together for today, I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, everybody's got to be in the same boat because you've got this, you've got your seeds started, right? Like, and they're turning into teenagers. If you want to call them that. Yeah. <laughs> and we're at the point where like, do we put them outside? Are they ready yet? And then, you know, still kind of planning where I'm going to put some of the stuff. Hey, Heather, Milk and Honey Heritage Farms and Danny at Wicked Awesome Gardening. Good to hey, see ladies. you guys. Hey, Tina. Hi, Tina. Life in the Piedmont Homestead. Thanks for coming. Confession for Heather. Yes. Mm -hmm. Heather, I'm in my craft room and it's nowhere near as bad as it was, but it's got some piles. So I got to take care of it just to tell you. Mm -hmm. You've done an amazing job in your craft room. Everything else has stayed really well. I just, the craft room has just become, I, I've got piles of paintings and. <laughs> oh, I'm loving the paintings, the paint and sips that you're going to. Oh, they're so fun. Oh, the one that you just did. I thought that was so cute. I want to see This it. is the one I just did. More in person. I love that. And then this was the one I did the last time. You need to put them on your wall. I know. I know. I love that. Tis the problem. How fun. Um, yeah, so. You should bring some of that to us sometime and do a live <laughs> paint and sip that'd be fun <laughs> there you go just tell I don't, us what you need creative redundancy it's not a sunflower it's kind of like a reddish wildflower mm -hmm. um and suburban hillbilly said nope i never started this late before so frustrated stuff keeps happening that was me last year mm -hmm. so so rebecca is there a way for you to spend like an hour to just get some things started. I know stuff keeps happening. I, I'm not trying to say you're not trying. What I'm saying is, is sometimes I have to force myself to find an hour and do it because it's what I want to do. Other to, Otherwise, everything else takes over. So just mm -hmm. my suggestion. Yeah, we are all I, about goal setting. So <laughs> I kind of <laughs> help you find a way. I was procrastination central in February because I could have started these on the first. Mm -hmm. I drag my feet till the 17th. I do that about some things too. Procrastination's a real struggle. And it'll hey, grow big TV. I'm just now working on my taxes. And I told Ooh. my husband, I said, I'm going to, I'm just going to do a little bit every day. Cause that's <laughs> so Lisa and I are are like opposites with the way that we tend to tackle things. Lisa will get down. Her and her hubby get down and they'll do like this huge, massive project and get it all wiped out. I like to go slow and steady wins the race. Little pieces. <laughs> That's how yeah, I, do. I don't do good with that. And, and <laughs> the, the reason why I don't do good with that is I lose interest and I stop. Do you? Okay. Yeah, so so better for me to... Find your, I get going yeah is to just forge ahead yeah like yeah. this literally with yeah. blinders because if i don't i won't get it yeah. done 
Yeah. Yep. Isn't that neat? I mean, it still works. It works for both of us. We found our our way, right? For what works for us. As long as it's still because I feel like the one thing that I that I enjoy is completing projects. I'm like project oriented. That's like my fun, my fun place. And <laughs> when they're done, I'm all happy. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. And and I count the baby steps. So that's good. Yeah. That, so to me, I've I've accomplished something, even though it's not maybe fully complete to the full extent I want it. And then I'm excited to do the next part because I don't know. I I count those steps. See, oh, I'm like Danny, Danny in that I will never finish the last step if I do it little by little. I know she yeah. does little pieces, but yeah, I'm better off doing it all. Mm -hmm. Because then I sit there and I say, okay, it's done. Um, yeah. Under pressure with a deadline. Yeah. Heather said something. Yeah, there it is. Work well under pressure with a deadline. Me too. Mm -hmm. So like I am not a morning person. I could drag until noon. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. My animals get fed earlier, but I'm just saying I could yeah. drag until noon. Um, mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like one o'clock on fire. Tina said, I am Elisa. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Tina. Hey, Troy Sutton. Hey, Blue. Oh, hey. Heather said, yes, a paint with Lisa. She thinks that would be fun, too. You just got to let us know what we have to have. Because I don't have any painting stuff. You just need acrylic paint, a canvas, water, and a paper towel. We'd need to know what we're painting and what, like, you know. That's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> what are we like what kind of colors am i gonna need this is why i go to the sip and paint they provide that for me oh do they oh, okay. oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah have to do have to do bits can't so see that's that's uh that's me right there so this last weekend we got um i had one garden bed that's got like an old-fashioned uh tiller thingy in it and it was nothing but tall grass. Again, it was like that last year before I planted in it. And last year I pulled everything up. I put some fresh dirt in there. I tried to kind of mix it up. It It's like it made no difference whatsoever. So this year I pulled everything up and I'd put nothing but cow manure compost in there because I had read that would be for dirt that's just totally gone. Like don't even think you're going to put like a potting soil blend or something in there. You need to just put pure compost in it. So that's what I did. It's we're supposed to get some rain. So I'm hoping the rain will kind of help to take the nutrition from the compost down to the to the lower levels of the soil. And then my my thought is I might end up putting a little more in there. And when I go to plant a pot, say like, you know, with a maybe about this size, I'm going to put it into a hole like this with yeah. good dirt too. So that way it has good soil to grow into. So that's my plan. Nice. Right. We'll nice. see nice. how it does. I uh, took, I took everything I out of my pot. I don't know why we're getting an echo. I took everything out of my mm -hmm. pots and mm -hmm. I, okay. And mm -hmm. I ended up, um, Mixing it in a wheelbarrow with chicken manure. That's a good idea. And then put it all back in the pot so it's loose, got rid of the roots. Yeah. That's a oh, really that's good cool, idea. Tina. Hey, Kathleen. Yeah, real quick. Um, Grow Big TV Joe. Hello. Good to see you. Troy Sutton. Hello. Thank you for coming. Blue Self Reliance. Hello, Blue. Um, am I missing anybody else in the chat? Thank you all for coming in. That's a good idea. It it worked really good. I mean, just I mean, I think so because it was all new compost last year. I can't do compost every year mm -hmm. um, for everything. Yeah, it gets expensive. So, just trying to find a way to amend the soil. Of course, I'll throw mm -hmm. fertilizer in there and all that. But it's good mm -hmm. because the snow melted on top of the outside stuff. I did wet everything mm -hmm. down when we first did it. Yeah. So we actually got rain this past Saturday, which was wild. That's awesome, too. Instead of snow, because the temp stayed up. 
Mm -hmm. So we didn't get the 19 inches they were forecasting. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, I feel like dealing with the dirt and trying to cover up my drink because I got flies in here. If you see me doing any of this, that's what that's about. Um, <clears throat> I feel like just getting your soil to the place where it needs to be is a learning curve. Like that's, you know, dealing with a new, every time you have a new soil challenge, it's a, it's a learning curve. Oh, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, creative well, redundancy. So is snow. We love it. Oh um, my gosh. Creative redundancy. Yes. Because I have noticed, well, last year, I would tell my husband every time it rains, it feels like my plants, everything in the garden is so much happier when it rains versus when I'm out there just watering the garden. And I hadn't thought about what was in the rain. So oh, yeah. nitrogen in the rain? I did not know our rain had nitrogen in it. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Just like it's snow. Like snow. snow, they call poor man's nitrogen. Huh. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And yes, using biochar. Yep. Mm -hmm. And learning how to use that and activate it and all of that good stuff. Joe, do you think I did a pretty good job on my tomato video with what I did with the biochar? While you're waiting I was for someone to comment in there and say, you nailed it. And nobody told me that. <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> well, while you're waiting for him. I wanted to tell you what I did. Hmm. We normally have, um, don't have any eggs for us. It's been that way since we hmm. got our chickens. We always sold out and we, all we had was some like one or two dirty ones that we kept. Well, uh -huh. oh, Joe said, yes, you did good. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for Claire making, confirming that for me. That's the word. Hey, Nancy. So what we ended up doing was because there was a layoff in town. And so we've lost a lot of customers. Um, uh -huh. We have a ton of eggs. And so the other day we went through like 128 eggs between pickling. Holy and smokes. Frying. Oh my goodness. I didn't, I don't have room in the fridge for them and I didn't want to mm -hmm. keep them out any longer. So anyway, I kept all the shells. I baked them and I put them in my old food processor. Uh -huh. And ground them up and threw them on my tomatoes indoors. Awesome. Huh. That's, Heather you know what? You it. I, thank you. I have like a bag of uh, a bunch of eggshells. And every time we have eggs, I just, I set them aside to dry. I crunch them up. Eventually I'll put them in my uh, coffee grinder. So they get yep. kind of powdery. And then I'll. I'll wait until gardening time and then I've got a nice big bag to use. Yeah. I usually don't save them and I usually put them right in the compost because we don't, hmm. we don't go through so many. I don't. Um, so we just throw them in the compost, but because we had so many at one time, I had like three trays. Mm -hmm. And so it was I awesome. Like this comment. Oh, Heather. <laughs> No, I didn't, Heather. <laughs> I would always ask her to do that all the time, Heather. You're, I'm right there with you. Heather, if you want the recipe, I'll I'll send it to you. I'll put it in the chat because it's super easy and Ryan mm -hmm. loves it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Creator Redundance, I'm really getting excited for gardening now. I am still, like every step of the way is so fun and exciting. So I got that, that I got two beds doctored up. And I can't say that they're done. I could just say that step one is done. What we did was huge. And honestly, I am so sore. Like my muscles are sore. I'm like, oh yeah, I got muscles. And it's kind of nice to feel your muscles. I have to say, like when you start to <laughs> get sore muscles, you're like, oh, there's muscles in there. They work. <laughs> they work. They're still there. But I, did, I don't even feel like I did. Like, seriously, I'm going to be real about this. When I go out, like the pulling up of the weeds and stuff, as soon as Mountain Grandpa sees me, here he comes. And when he, it's like, you know, my husband to the rescue. And I'm still doing stuff. But here I, I'm like, you know, pulling stuff. He comes back. He has like a rake and a hoe. And he, so I'll try to rake. 
he'll come, he'll take the rake from me. And like, here I am, you know, going, <laughs> going in my, I'm so slow. And it, then he gets in, it's just like, wah, wah. And he's like really getting down on it. And it doesn't take long for him at all. And I, I told him, I'm like, holy cow, like I still would have, I still would have, had you not come over here and helped me, I still would have been doing this. I would not have moved that quickly. He's the bomb. So he did most of it, right? Like to be fair. And if he sees me trying to carry one of those heavy bags, he'll come over and he's like, give that to me. You're going to hurt your back. It's, it, he gets it and he carries it over there. I'm like, well, I did help get it to you part of the way. <laughs> at least, at least yeah. But then I'm the one who might be like, I'm the one who's going to be down on my knees, like planting things like, you know, Ooh. I, I got my, I got my, uh, my jugs out there with um, the zucchini and the butternut squash for the vineyard chicks. The I went ahead and put some more Black Beauty zucchini out there, some onions, watermelon seeds, cantaloupe seeds in the winter sowing jugs, which we don't have that much left of winter. But Lisa, I've got no room in my house. Anybody else feel the struggle with wanting to start plants and they just don't? They don't fit under the lights or the grow, grow thing in the jig. I have so many tomatoes this year, even though I gave them away and I don't have room for much else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ta-da. Exactly. CR. Yeah. I had, uh, yeah. Ryan helped me too. He, he comes mm -hmm. out and he helps me. I, in fact, part of me is like, if you want to eat it, you're going to help. Yeah. Like, he does help. I will say that. I don't yeah. have to. But I wish you'd just keep the gardening back, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what he does. The tilling. The, yeah. And yep. we do need to put up a trellis for the kidney beans. I think I'm going to try to grow peas this year, too. Nice. I've never grown beans or peas, but I know they're good for the soil. So that's what I'm, that's kind of my driving force behind the peas. Um, kidney <laughs> beans is because it's the survival seeds 24. I have to do that. Oh my gosh. Heather has me dying because. <laughs> that's funny. But did you see Heather's too? I practice squatting. Mm -hmm. Heather, yes. Last night I threw diesel. We call them meatballs. They're little treats. And I threw one to him and it went under a dresser. And I was like, no, I got to get down there quite the mm -hmm. sight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't. I've never been able to kneel since I'm a teenager because of the pain in my mm -hmm. knees. So mm -hmm. standing over, I stand and, and lean over and it's just horrible. Yeah, it is. We well, had when you're in good shape, girl. <laughs> Yeah, she is, isn't she? Pigs, I'll do anything. Like I'll squat, I'll kneel, mm -hmm. even though it hurts. I don't care. I'll do it. But mm -hmm. yep. when it comes to the garden, nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I told my husband, I'm like, oh my gosh, because I was feeling sore the next day, which was, uh, so we did most of it on Sunday. And then yesterday I was feeling the soreness. I'm like, geez, I need to make sure that I, that I do more again tomorrow, which is now today. So I don't know. We'll see how good I do with that by the time. By the time I get off work, I don't know. My but, friend posted oh, in um, up in South Dakota. Well, she's in South Dakota, about ninety minutes north of me, and she's in the plains, like not uh -huh. mountains, lower elevation. So there's more heat, uh -huh. more wind. Yeah, her garlic is like this, and I said, "Girl, okay. I got nothing in the land of Siberia." <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> No, yes, back back pain is real, and you got to be careful, everybody. Yep. When you're out there in the garden, because you hurt your back, and then you're like, you're down. You you yep. just lost yep. so much time. Or I sit. I just sit down on the dirt and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, menopause doesn't help either. Mm -hmm. Of course, your garlic's huge between the rain and the nice weather. I got nothing. Yeah, awesome. I know it, Lisa. Dang it. That's all right. It's I have fun with it. Before and after. Good point, Heather. Good point. Yep. Same here. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. 
So now that I'm now that I have like some of those seeds started and they're just out there, I'm still trying to plan what I'm going to put where. Still trying to get all that figured out. And then some of the things like the herb stuff, I'm having to because of the fact that I want to plant some things out in the woods. I'm having to check and like learn where can I plant this that it's going to survive before I, you know, put it out there. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a learning curve too, is figuring out, you know, where is your plants going to be the most successful? I don't know. Maybe I overthink it, but where are they going to get morning sun versus afternoon sun? Because in our garden beds, they're either getting morning sun and then they're going to get shaded by the afternoon, by the trees in the afternoon. Or they're going to be shaded in the morning and getting most of the afternoon sun. Just depends where they are. Or they're going to get sun all day long. We got one of those too. Yeah, yeah. I have those uh, stackable planters and I was not impressed with them. Um, Mm -hmm. I find that you get shade, always get shade on one side, no matter where I put them. It's almost like they need to be on a gurney you can turn. And that's why I never spent for the um, expensive ones. But I'm going to try growing herbs in mine. I'm going to use a tomato steak through the middle of it in the ground Mm -hmm. and then stack Mm -hmm. them on there and try it. The other thing is they dry out so quickly. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to see if I can uh, grow some herbs in it. Awesome. Can you turn them? You can't, huh? It's one more thing to do. It is one more thing to do. That's I mean, one of that. If I have to sit there and turn pot, pots, I just won't plan on one side. I'll see how it goes. Yeah. Plus, every time you turn them, especially when they're stacked, there's some opportunity for some error there. <laughs> I could do all kinds of damage in that scenario. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it was on like a... I'm thinking of one of those... Um, what do they call them? The lazy... That's what creative redundancy said, a lazy Susan. <laughs> yes, a lazy Susan, where they could just spin. That yeah. would be handy. Well, on the on the stake, they should spin, but I mean, you have to move the whole thing. So mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. I'm just not that dedicated. Yeah. Yeah, green stalks. Yeah, I just don't. Mm-hmm. I just don't want to spend the money on them because I find well, mm-hmm. the the green stalks probably don't dry out as fast because they have the waterer. Mm-hmm. But I've just never spent the money. Yeah. Well, you you can get some hardcore wins there, too. Yeah. I don't know. That's like, I, I always worry about them falling over or something. Me, too. I just don't think there's enough room in them for me. Mm-hmm. I think they're a great idea for people who need those options. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and Walmart carries them. The green stock, Tina, or a different kind? Probably an off-brand, I'm betting. if Because I know I bought my friend of mine an off-brand one. And she loves mm-hmm. it, but she's in a small area. So it just makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. I'd just rather buy a stock tank and fill it with dirt. Mm-hmm. It's a lot easier to be able to move the soil around for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Tina. Mm-hmm. Um. So, so you've got stuff in the, the jugs, you got stuff outside mm-hmm. and you got mm-hmm. stuff inside. So I, I still need to, I planted my potatoes. So I've got potatoes in the ground, but I got more potatoes. I want to put more potatoes out there and I'm like down to the wire now that has to be done this week. And I wanted to get some hay bales because I've heard that you can plant potatoes under hay bales. And I know you've got, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If you get hay that has had like, a, you know, some sort of herbicide, you're kind of screwed, but I'm wanting to try it anyways. That's try what I want to try. Um, and because that way, if I do, I can put those dang hay bales, not at directly in my garden, but right. out on the edge over by where the lemon balm area is. Because I've got the lemon balm area. I've got a peach tree over there. I'm thinking I could just grow right in that little area. It's on the edge of my yard. And maybe if I'm, if I get four of the, um, of the hay bales, maybe I could even, you know, fill up the center of it with some compost and get some good dirt going in there and maybe even grow something in the middle of those four hay bales. This is kind of where I'm going with this thought. 
That's um, really cool. And then I could use the hay bales to put some little fencing around the on the hay bales. It would be super easy <clears throat> just to put a little border if I add, do decide to grow something in the middle that the deer might want to eat. So this is kind of where I'm going with this. But um, this, this is what Tina shows oh, for $42 okay. for a seven tier from Walmart. Tina, thank you. That's awesome. It is awesome. Something to I think mean, about. I, I like the idea of strawberries in them. The mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Tina. The problem is, is if I put strawberries in them and leave them all winter, they're not coming back. That means I'm buying strawberries every year because they'll freeze in a container. So what I do, that's why I put mine in the big stock tank. Mm -hmm. It is a pretty color. It is a pretty color. Oh, that's kind of in the pioneer woman color. There's a black fuzzy color. Oh, shoot. I've, I've been having to check my fruit trees on the daily for like the little, the little nests of all those worms, caterpillars. Oh, you. I could see how high quality potting mix. And I love the idea of putting bush beans in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do strawberries and lettuce in mine. Lettuce is a good idea. Yeah, I like the lettuce too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, huh. I don't need pink. I don't need pink. <laughs> I love purple, but the last thing I want to look at is purple outside. Yeah, by your house. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, so I won't be that far ahead, so I won't be able to do that. But that's a good idea. If it doesn't work out this year, I'll have them for next year. It's kind of you, what I think. Do it this year. I'll tell you why. Because we're supposed to plant, like the lore, folklore here is we're supposed to plant by Good Friday potatoes. Okay. Um, the day before Good Friday, we were tilling the garden and it was frozen. Uh-huh. So there's wow. no way we could put potatoes in the ground. No, yeah. So we just wait until the soil is ready. We wait until um, we can get it all tilled up and amended. And then like this weekend, we will probably go get seed potatoes and put them in. Thank you, Tina. Thanks, Tina. Have a great day. Thanks for the info, too. That's awesome. I've heard of people growing in the tops of the hay bales, too. That just sounds like so much fun to me. Have you Jason Ilkinirum, he did that. Mm -hmm. I'll have to go check his out. I know that people have done that. That'll be fun. Another fun thing. I'm going to give you a little tip. Do you mind if do I share it. a little tip for YouTubers here? You do it. Okay. Try, I've been trying to think of how to hide this in a live so sponsors don't see it. <laughs> so when sponsors reach out to you and say, we want to offer you this, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. We had somebody reach out to us for a garden bed. Mm -hmm. And I saw that many people were getting these little dinky round garden beds, which are great. Don't get me wrong. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I don't need that. That was what my thinking was. Like, I'm so mm -hmm. I wasn't going to support it. Mm -hmm. Well, when they asked me to do the collaboration, I looked up their stuff online. I uh -huh. said, Yes, we would be very interested. Here is the bed that we want. Good idea. And it, they said, well, we need you to do it by May or something like that. And I said, well, if you would have looked at my zone, mm -hmm. you would know I'm not able to do that. Yeah. So it's got to be June. Mm -hmm. And so long story short, they get, are sending us. I haven't ordered it yet, but I have to wait till April 10th. Uh -huh. They're sending us an, uh, a long oval bed that is waist awesome. high, 36 inches high. Oh, my gosh. What a so, win. Ladies and gentlemen, if you get those offers, you're in control, okay. not yeah. them. Yeah, that is a good tip. You can also tell them that you want to be paid for your thing. I don't usually do that because to me, the free product is enough. Yeah. But just an FYI. That is a really good idea. I hope they reach out to me. I think nobody's reached out to me about garden beds yet. I don't want to say the name, Danny, because I don't want to insult them. Okay. But if you want, I can message you on Instagram or something. It's That's not the big one that everybody <laughs> looks at. It's a no name. Mm -hmm. Text me. <laughs> okay. 
As long as you have enough growing time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. The top of the hay. Hey, who goes? Strawberries in the. Um, yeah, I've seen people grow all kinds of things. I'll probably be a little um, particular about what I grow in the top of them because where I plan on putting them is going to be in the woods. So deer could have access. I don't want to guard them. I might opt for something that they don't like, maybe. So what you can do, you could end up taking four dowels or whatever sticks you have and put them in the end of the bale mm -hmm. and just put something you have around it yeah some kind of chicken wire or something because i i can't have mm -hmm. anything open or it's gone hey hooga yeah mm -hmm. i want 12 too heather but i had to settle for one mm -hmm. oh wow he used to grow tomatoes and hay bales very cool good idea suburban hillbilly yeah and then it's like um Is one for him to review and one to give away. Nice. Yeah. That's an excellent idea. Yeah. To at least ask, right? Yep. A freeze dryer too. Oh gosh, that'd be a wonderful one. Huh. That's nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I get reached out to all the time and I just I ignore them. I don't want their Yeah, I I, I, I don't want to them. constantly do reviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I make it you. worth it for stuff we want. Mm -hmm. Oh, Troy had good ideas. Let's see, wrap the straw bale with cardboard for potatoes. Huh? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, older book, you might be able to go on Google Books and look it up. Mm hmm. That's cool. I will. I'll go look for that book. Oh, she's taking notes. Watch out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is anybody else going to be trying anything a little bit different than what they've done in the past this year? And I don't know, something like the straw bale thing. I have that IBC toad. I want to try and grow carrots and if I can get enough stuff to fill it. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I was, what'd she say? Just received a kneeling bench. Oh, how nice. Yeah. You don't have to do a video. That was the terms that they asked for. I could have said no, but I said, you know what, if you want to give me the one I want, I'll do a video to see how it is, but I'll tell the truth. And that's what I told them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best way to do it too. I, we just, we get, I've received things for like the diamond painting, you know, with those little things. Obviously, I'm going to pass on that. That's not my forte. <laughs> I, get a, I get a bunch, but I'll show them on Instagram if I if I can mm -hmm. versus YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I turn a lot down. Hey, food forest mm -hmm. permaculture. This year is so with the oh, start a dye garden. With woad. Huh. OK, what's woad? Wool. Die garden. It makes me think that she's um, maybe planting some flowers she can use to dye things with. Am I right, Blue? That's a fun, fun idea. Oh, that's so cool, Gwen. She found old seeds she's going to plant that were her mom's. Here. Oh, wow. Very cool. What is, what are we seeing? Can you tell it's, me about that? Um, it's a reel that says natural plant dyes, weld, matter, and woad, a rainbow from root to leaf. What? Do you yarn with it? I guess. Fabrics, too. Oh, or you just use it for dyeing something. That must be correct. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I was watching uh, Vineyard Chicks and those... Um, Oh, gosh, they did so good with coming up with a jingle for that company. The Let Pots, because I'm hearing their little song in my head as I tell you. <clears throat> let pot, let pot. Such a good little jingle. Um, so they're so talented. They it's are so cute. amazing. They are. And they I shared on the My Community page their, um, their 
rehearsal for the show that they did where they opened for another Christian artist over the, this last weekend. Uh, they shared the rehearsal. And um, one of the songs that they did is an original song that they co-wrote with Charles over at Bushcraft Family. Wow. And it's awesome. It is an awesome song. Cool. Um, it's called, I think, like, I think it's called My Salvation Song or Salvation Song, Salvation Something. And it is a really good song. You guys should go check that out. Good luck, oh, Danny. It might be on the Joyful Noise and Notes. Might be on that channel. Okay, Danny, thank you for coming. Um, oh, and Blue is going to be trying to grow flax also. My own plant threads for weaving into fabric. That is really cool. I want to see that. I hope that you share all that. That would be fun to see. <laughs> I'm laughing, CB, because I don't even use a robe for myself either. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. want to, I want to see your dogs in them. <laughs> I tell them not to send me anything because I don't want it. But she's got that cute new puppy. I bet you that'd be adorable. Oh, it would be adorable. I want to see it. That'd be so fun. As far as gardening skills, um, other than the dirt thing and trying to, um, you know, grow out in the woods, I'm just trying to get better about growing the plants that I'm going to grow because I'm involved in these collaborations and there are challenges out there. So the survival seeds, 24, those six yep. seeds, I, I have never been successful with beets. I've never grown butternut squash. I've grown other squash. So I hope it's just as easy. Um, pepperoncini last year I had one plant. It grew one pepperoncini. We'll see how it does this year for me. And then, I mean, kidney beans never grew beans or peas ever. Onions I've always sucked at. So I'm, there's all of that. And then I want to make sure that I share and shout out Joe, um, Garden State Gardener and Grow Big TV because Grow Big TV has six $100 challenges going on for growing certain vegetables. And I don't know if anyone in the, any of the, any moderators in the chat might be able to share those, those links to those videos from, for them. But that is the Dr. Waichi tomato, um, the sunflower, the Detroit red beets. Another one, you know, we already said, I don't, <laughs> I've not been successful at growing beets or radishes. And yep. he's got the Detroit red beets and the watermelon radish. And I'm trying this year, I'm learning how to grow those. And I want to grow them, not just because of food. I want to grow them because they are so strong in a medicinal, um, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food kind of way. Those are just amazing. Um, so there's all of these. So this year, I want to be a radish growing expert. <laughs> That's what I want. I want to feel like I'm finally successful growing radishes and it shouldn't be that hard because I can keep growing them, right? Like you can keep growing radishes right up until winter so I can plant different seeds and I can try different things and, and try to try to get these dang radishes. I like the greens too. But I need the radishes because we like radishes are a big medicine for us in this house. So we I've never had luck with radishes either. And I'm going to be planting some this week and I'm doing the French breakfast. Um, but, you know, one of the one of the things about that's why I didn't do the Vineyard Chicks collab. I told them, I said, I've mm -hmm. I've got limited space and I it's yeah. precious real estate. Yeah. And all of those items have not done well here. Um, mm -hmm. I do have onion sets that I'm using, but seeds mm -hmm. have not done well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to, I don't know how they're going to do. I mean, I, I we will see. I love Mary's heirloom seeds. I suspect I'm going to have some wins and I'm going to have some fails. That's kind of, yep. I'm, I'm expecting it, but at least I'll learn something in the process. You know what I mean? Exactly. I mean, come on, look at the past five years. If I didn't, take the initiative to learn or take the initiative to fail. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. I wouldn't have known what I need to do. So. So mama knows best, AKA Gwen. Um, 
I've never pulled sucker leaves off of my peppers. I just let those suckers grow. And yep. one of the, I mainly grow um, cayenne peppers, jalapeno peppers, and uh, bell peppers. And I've, I don't know, I've always been happy with, with our plants. Um, they could grow a little bit better, I guess. Oh, there's a nut, there's a Peter pepper challenge that um, Joe is doing also. I won't be doing that one, honestly, because I think I'm just too late. I think I'm too late on that one. Um, 48 chestnut trees from seeds. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Quite the oh, process wow. to watch too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those radishes. I'm going to do a video and I've got some video. I'm going to wrap it up for my radish of why I'm growing radish because it's so amazing. Like seriously, it's a, it's a medicine in our household too. Daikon radish. Yes, those are so good for you. So CB took an interesting herb class, learning to do medicinal. Hey, LP. YouTube is weird about that. That's why you won't typically see me um, do any. I've done a couple of herbal videos, but I'm, I want to be careful about it. Plus, you know what, CB? Everybody that does herbs thinks they're a genius and they're always going to want to. <laughs> they'll find fault in something that you say. <laughs> And it's, it's so irritating. You're like, oh. Let me just me. tell you this. <laughs> you post a stupid little short, mm -hmm. all in good fun. Yes. And you get 10,000 views. The uh -huh. nastiest people come out. Yes. And bash women. Yes. And in the meanwhile, it's like, could you just laugh or keep scrolling people? Yes. Yes. It's crazy. Yep. And you're, I'll tell you when it comes to like herb stuff too, they might leave a comment or they might say something that you completely disagree with. Yep. <laughs> they had this happen. <laughs> Lisa heard me, act, Lisa heard me act ugly. Like I, I don't often lose my temper, but if I'm tired, if I don't feel well. And it, you know, if all of the things are right for me, you're to act human. Ugly, it's going to happen. <laughs> when Lisa, Lisa heard it. I'm like, Lisa. Uh, so anyhow, and I still don't agree with what the person said, but that's okay. I don't really watch their channel. They were just on someone else's channel and I overheard them, but um, yeah. I don't know. People can just be nasty and it's yeah, like, oh, it is. And I like, block. I like to approach things of, you know, do your own research, see what you think. This is what my research has told me. This is what I believe. And I might, I try to not talk about herbs that I don't have personal preference from too, like personal experience with, because if I haven't used them myself or I don't know somebody who has used them and if they don't seem like a reputable, you know, person that I've seen use them or whatever, then I, you won't hear me talk about them because um, firsthand experience speaks volumes. You can read all kinds of stuff in a book, right? And the bottom line is we share what we know at the time and our experience at the time, it can change over time. Yeah. Yes. True that. I will try that this year. I'll try to pull the suckers on my pepper plants to see what have I got to lose? I will try to do that. Yep. It, exactly. Our new land. I am right there with you, bud. Let me tell you. Hey, LP. I'm still getting caught up, caught up, guys. Okay. So. Uh huh. Yeah, blue. We have to be careful. And I have so much different content on our channel. I have to be careful. I, I really? want to say something. Yeah. Mm. So we posted the deer being processed. Mm -hmm. It's not monetized. Well, yeah. it's limited. But I rated it fair and said that it would probably be shocking to some people because it would be. Mm -hmm. Because not everybody wants to see it. I don't find it shocking. Uh-uh. Um, I find it helpful. <laughs> but it got more views. It just earned less money. And, and if I have to not monetize something to just throw it up there. Mm -hmm. Huh. I'm not even at the point where I can get anything monetized yet. How close are you? Do you want to share? 
So I am at about 2,100 watch hours. So I have okay. a ways to go with watch hours. You need to do a lot more videos. I do. I need to do more videos. And, tell her, I, need tell her. To, and I need to do more lives. So the, the hard part's finding the time and maintaining balance in my life. Yeah. There's and that's what it's all about. And that's why I don't post consistently anymore. I don't have the time and it's just, it mm -hmm. becomes exhausting. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Very nice. Yep. Don't pinch the suckers. Huh. Too much sun and heat the paint. Heat but the see, paint. good point. Everybody has different views. They do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like my bed that's going to be getting a lot of sun. I want to grow peppers over there. Um, and that's where do your own research comes in, right? You yeah. take everything mm -hmm. that people suggest and you decide what works best for you. People yeah. faithfully will tell you six to eight weeks before frost, get those tomatoes and pep and peppers mm -hmm. started, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Started mine February 17th. Why? Because I found mm -hmm. out that I think this is the second or the third year in a row. Mm -hmm. It's worked for us because they go out. My plants are bigger than my local nursery starts. Oh, that's awesome, Lisa. It, is it a big deal? No. But the point is, is it shows you that's that they're a lot more mature. Wow. You could keep nailing that and you could end up with a nice little tomato business. Just saying. <laughs> well, I'm like the egg dealer. I got everybody addicted to the starts this year for free. Mm -hmm. Next year I can charge them. <laughs> there you go. And have more. Right? Yeah plan for more because those are expensive yeah they are mm -hmm. yep things seem not so real just to oh yeah i know i know yeah. it i want to show suburban hillbilly hang on Yep. Slight differences. It's not just zones because grow zones don't talk about humidity. Oh, that's beautiful. Holy now cow. We'll, hold on a minute. I got to show you the other. I don't want to show their name. I'm proud of mine and they look nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm trying to think. Oh, here I can do this. Because I don't want to offend anyone because there's no need to. Mm -hmm. So okay, when was, I, oh, oh sorry. sorry, this was what was posted this week at my local nursery. Oh my gosh, you are totally outdoing them. How I amazing mean, is that? It's a silly little thing that makes my day, makes me feel good. That's yeah. all. But I'm, I'm proud of them too. As it should. Like, you know, that's a skill that you were developing and look where you're at. And I think by measuring your progress to local progress, that is a supposed to be an expert and you're outdoing them. I think that says a lot, Lisa. I should go ask if they need help. <laughs> Maybe you could sell your plants to them. Can I just walk in there and go, excuse me, when did you start your tomatoes? Uh, no, don't tell them what you're doing. No, I'm just going to say, when did you start these? They're looking kind of small. Yeah. That would be rude. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. What if they Thank didn't even you. start them? What if they just bought them from somebody else? That They could be like a source for you for yeah. you know, potential sales um, and that'd be an easy one but they might yeah. not pay as if you sold straight to the consumer yeah and i'm not trying to one-up mm -hmm. them because i'm proud of what they do i just it was mm -hmm. one of those moments where i looked at it and it clicked and i went wow you have to be proud of yourself feeling pretty That's proud of myself <laughs> yes you should be um gwen i was gonna say last year i had so many volunteer tomatoes come up but they didn't, um, I, it was almost like I wasn't planning on them being where they were. And I think they actually impeded the growth, not of only of themselves, but of something else. If I have that happen this year with the volunteers, I'm digging them up and they're getting moved. 
That's my that's my plan with those volunteers. I'm not going to let them just stay where they are because they're not going to do good. Hey, good for you, Barb. You're going to laugh. The one volunteers that um, and oh, let me go to Barb first. Barb is not only selling plants, but she's selling some goodies with it. And she posted on Instagram and I was drooling. So if y'all are in Texas near Barb's country home, check her out on Instagram, Facebook, um, because girl got some beautiful plants going on and some goodies. And I wish I was down there. Awesome. So That is awesome. But I will say about volunteer plants, I've had one thing we've had because in the back, um, so the chicken coop is here and the little pig coop is here, uh, little pig house is here. Mm -hmm. That whole thing back there is where they fed their animals. So there's always mm -hmm. a lot of volunteers growing up. Uh -huh. The best dill ever grows back there. Really? And so it's really funny when I'm done, I always go by the dill that I've planted Mm -hmm. And last year we needed dill for, I think it was pickled eggs or pickles or something. And mm -hmm. Ryan's like, there's that big dill in the back. And I went, Ooh, let's go do that. <laughs> it was awesome. That is awesome. She I does just, have adorable chicky babes. <laughs> I just love when you can have things grow when it's not even taking up garden bed space. Yeah. That's what I love because I feel like our garden bed space is always limited. You know, you can only fit so many tomatoes and cantaloupes and cucumbers and squash and yeah, whatever else you got going in all of your garden beds. So we've got two minutes left. And I just want to just to recap some skills, just like don't be yeah. afraid to try do things differently. Mm -hmm. um, experiment, 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 even if you don't think it's going to work. And I'll give you a good example. We I won seeds from Joe at Garden State Gardener. Uh, the first year we had our greenhouse, we finally got it set up and it was like September. Mm -hmm. I was harvesting in October in the snow from mm -hmm. it. Um, wow. That's awesome. And it was awesome, you know, and, and the main reason was because there was nothing in there because we just got it put up and I mm -hmm. put a couple buckets in there and I put stuff in there, but you have to experiment you have to look for things that work for you. Google things for your zone. I know zone is a guideline. Mm -hmm. I know that. Ours is now 5A. I don't buy it. We're still 4B. They say 5A. But irregardless, mm -hmm. the reality of it is, is I know that we have the potential for June to September and that's it. Mm -hmm. So we bought some seeds that are specialized in higher altitude. Mm -hmm. One of our problems is that we have cooler soil at night. Mm -hmm. So give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's great, Lisa. Yep. And when you're looking at why, so why something isn't working, think outside of the box, go educate yourself on that particular thing. I've really been nerding out on growing radishes, for example, yep. <laughs> just to figure out what it is. What's my deal. Yep. Expand knowledge and experiences. Thank you, Barb. Right back at you, boo. Mm -hmm. Bye blue. What did Gwen say? I had something else come up in that raised bed. thought it was a cantaloupe, but it was a zucchini. <laughs> That's awesome. They all look alike when they're small. They do, those big leaves. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, I hope all of your gardening goes well this week. And May all we your will... garden dreams come true. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Here, wait, wait. I have a little pink one. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> See you next week, everybody. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>